Indonesian people are never separated from horror stories, there are so many horror story experiences that netizens share on social media, those of you who are timid and alone at home, should not continue to hear this story. So let's jump right into the story. The incident began when a man named Krishna who worked as a salesman in the largest cigarette company in Indonesia, had just received a bonus from his office. He gets a bonus for successfully achieving the targets set by the company. Since the bonus was fairly decent, he also planned to buy a car. Krishna currently has a wife who is currently pregnant. Because he wanted to pamper his wife who was pregnant, he bought a car at a price that fit in his pocket, he plans to buy a used car, so it can be cheaper and can be paid in cash. Long story short, Krishna found a car that fits her heart and budget, namely the grey Olivina car. Krishna bought the car from a man who was in need of money. Because it was deemed appropriate and appropriate, Krishna finally agreed with the father. When the car came to the newly married couple's house, they were both very happy. They can freely go anywhere with their own car without using an office car. However, after only a few days at home, the car of Siabu Monkey, the couple's nickname, always smelled fishy. Yes, the fishy smell of blood. They always try to search between cars to find out the source of the fishy smell. What is feared is that there are animals that die and bleed. However, all that did not work, because not a single animal died on the sidelines of the car. The fishy smell of blood was getting stronger as the evening approached. Krishna often took Abu Monkey to the car wash, and asked to be given more fragrance. However, the fishy smell was still there when he got home. In addition, if they are driving a car at night there is always the sound of a baby crying, even though the sound is faint. Although not so clear, the sound of the baby's cry was quite disturbing to them. Until finally, Krishna plans to take the car to a psychic, or to someone who knows how to solve the car's problem. Because according to him this is not a common problem. But because of busy work, finally the plan to the paranormal was always pushed back. Until one night Krishna had to come home late, because he was working overtime at around 1 o'clock in the morning. All the way home, he kept smelling the fishy smell of blood. When the distance to the house was only three kilometers away, for some reason Krishna's hair was tense. While driving, Krishna recited prayers continuously. However, the sound of the baby's cry appeared again. It sounded clearer and louder than before, and finally he began to suspect that something was wrong. Feeling that something was wrong, he continued to check the rear view mirror to make sure things were going well. When Krishna looked in the rear view mirror for the third time, there was a woman holding a baby in the back seat of her car. He stared at each other for a moment, until finally Krishna had to suddenly step on the brakes of his car. Suddenly, Krishna got out of the car. But because it was still the middle of the night, it was very quiet outside, almost no one was there. Many times Krishna read the prayer with what he saw. And when he looked again from the outside, there was no one in the back seat of the car. 
even though the distance from the house was getting closer, he was still confused about whether to continue wearing the car or not. After calming down for a while, Krishna finally decided to go home by car, before entering, he did not forget to read the verse of the chair first. When entering the car, Krishna glanced around the car to make sure there was no one behind the car seat. And it's empty. When a few meters passed, the figure of a pale woman holding a baby appeared behind Krishna again. The fishy smell is even more pungent than usual. Suddenly, he immediately read the verse of the chair with a shout. Because it was Krishna's first time seeing an invisible creature, he was driving while shaking and almost crying. Cold sweat dripped all over his body. With extraordinary gas power, he immediately parked the car in front of his house without being put into the garage. Arriving at the house, cold sweat kept running down his body. He tried to go to sleep right away, but couldn't because the ghost kept haunting him. The next day, Krishna immediately had a high fever, so that his wife was confused when her husband had to go home in a hurry and park the car carelessly. Krishna did not dare to tell, because his wife was pregnant. He was afraid that his wife would think about it, so Krishna reasoned that he wanted to sleep early, because he was sleepy last night. After recovering a few days of illness, Krishna is still traumatized to ride Siabu Monkey. Because the fishy smell was still felt, he decided to take it to a Kai who could find a solution to the problem. Krishna was accompanied by his friend to go to the Kai's residence in the afternoon. But the haunting ghost figure appeared suddenly behind the seat. Shocked, Krishna finally couldn't control the car and ended up crashing into a ravine. Even so, both of them survived and only suffered abrasions on their hands. Krishna immediately asked his brother for help to inform his condition. It wasn't long before many people passed by to help Krishna and his friends to calm down. According to local residents, single accidents often occur, and Krishna is one of them. I don't know why. But Krishna didn't tell him that he had an accident because he saw an apparition in the back seat of his car. Then a tow truck came and took the car. Krishna was picked up by his brother. And while in the car, the brother discussed why he got into an accident there. He also asked his friend if he saw an apparition in the back seat of the car. But he said he didn't see it. In fact, he wondered why Krishna was suddenly shocked and swerved. Krishna was surprised, why was he the only one who could see the woman's appearance? After he and his friend were treated at the hospital, they went straight home. Krishna really thought about the car, until finally he decided to immediately meet with Kai Muhi. Using his car, he finally arrived at Kai Muhi's place. He immediately let him in. And without further ado, Krishna immediately told the events that happened to Krishna. Kai knew he actually wanted to check directly on his car, but since the car was still in the repair shop, he was cancelled. Kai knew he said that if there is an object inhabited by spirits, then it could be that previously there was an incident related to the spirit. So, he was advised to meet the previous owner of this car. Before going home, they were given a few bottles of prayer water to calm them down. The next day after Krishna came home from work, he immediately met the previous owner of this car. Say his name, Mr. Yahya. He stated the purpose of coming, and told some of the events that happened to Krishna related to the car, and Pak Yahya was shocked. 
As long as he used the car, he never felt or encountered anything strange, let alone saw an apparition. He also never acted and did something strange to his car, until his car was inhabited by these spirits. Because he didn't catch the lie from Mr. Yahya's statement. Krishna is stuck, why does the car he bought has a guard? After a long conversation, he finally said goodbye, and Mr. Yahya suggested that his car should be cleaned or cleaned of invisible creatures. A week after meeting with Mr. Yahya, Krishna got a call from the repair shop. He said the workshop employees there often found a woman sitting holding her baby in the back seat of her car. They were terrified and had only recently experienced something like this. Krishna immediately coordinated with Mr. Yahya to speed up the car repair process. Because it turns out this creature began to appear to anyone. Mr. Yahya also agreed, a few days after that they immediately came to the workshop and in the afternoon. After the repair shop closed, they had asked the owner for permission to do a ruid on this car. Mr. Yahya came with a middle-aged man wearing a cocoa shirt and a turban. He introduced himself as Mr. Hadi who would do the ruitan. They also started this car care event. There besides Krishna, Mr. Yahya and Mr. Vadi, there is also the owner of the workshop and some of his employees. This car was bathed in water which he said, had been prayed for. All parts of the car both inside and outside were splashed with water, and Mr. Hadi prayed in the car. When Mr. Hadi was praying in the car, one of the workshop employees was in a trance. He immediately fell down and suddenly shouted don't throw us out, don't throw us out. Suddenly, the people who were there were all shocked and scared. Mr. Hadi immediately got out of the car and immediately grabbed the head of the person who was in a trance. He immediately asked who's this? I'm Renai, are you the one in this car? Yeah, he said while crying. Why do you live in the car? Because I died there with my baby, he replied. Why did you die? Doni, Doni, Doni. The person who was in a trance even cried and called Doni's name. I don't know who Doni is, Krishna doesn't know, but Mr. Yahya's face has changed. He seemed shocked and nervous. Who knows Krishna also asked Mr. Yahya, do you know Doni? That's my son, said Mr. Yahya with a pale face. It turns out that Mr. Yahya has a son named Doni who is still in high school in grade 3. Wow, Krishna was surprised. Meanwhile, Renai's spirit did not want to be asked to leave the car because she said she was comfortable there. He cried and kept crying. Mr. Hadi who was trying to move his spirit seemed overwhelmed. He looks very tired. Krishna and Mr. Yahya finally decided to find out from Doni. Maybe Doni knows something someone named Renai. Finally they have cared for this car. He immediately followed Mr. Yahya back to his house to meet Doni. Incidentally Doni was at home so they could directly ask him. When they asked Doni Renai's name, Doni's reaction was immediately shocked and pale. Mr. Yahya was immediately suspicious of Doni's reaction. So is Krishna. So they urged Doni to tell him who Renai really was. It turns out that Renai is Doni's girlfriend. They've been dating for a long time, and their dating style isn't just an ordinary courtship. Their courtship has crossed the line, and finally Renai is pregnant. Initially, Doni was willing to take responsibility for Renai's pregnancy. But Doni promised to marry Renai if he passed the high school exam. 
and Rinai agreed. Even though Rinai had to wait and cover her distended stomach first. But that night Rinai asked Domi for help that he felt heartburn. She looks like she's about to give birth. So ask Domi to pick him up. Domi also picks up Rinai at his house and plans to take Rinai to the maternity clinic. Doni picked up Rinai in Siabu Monkey's car, which at that time still belonged to his father. Previously, Rinai only lived with her father, while his mother had died. So because his father was busy at work, he was not aware of his son's physical changes. Rinai also covered her pregnancy in such a way as to prevent anyone from getting suspicious. While on the way to the clinic, Rinai felt a heartburn in her stomach. Doni and Rinai panicked, they didn't know what to do. But suddenly an evil thought flashed through Doni's mind. He immediately covered Rinai's mouth until Rinai ran out of breath. Rinai also died at that time while the baby was still alive. The baby is a boy, but because the devil has taken control of Doni's mind, the innocent baby becomes a victim of Doni's barbarity. For fear of his actions being known by others, Doni dumped Rinai's body in a ravine somewhere that night. Doni felt that his actions were safe, and that no one would know about it. When he heard the full story from his son Doni, Mr. Yahya was immediately emotional and hit Doni. He immediately swore that Doni must be held accountable for his actions. At that time Doni immediately prostrated himself at his father's feet. Doni admitted he was wrong and made a mistake. Krishna who heard it could only shake his head that the association of young people today is really out of bounds. They don't think about the risks of their actions. Mr. Yahya also urged Doni to show him where he dumped Rinai's body. The next day, after they reported to the nearest police station and accompanied by several police officers and went straight to the ravine and was referred to by Doni. It turned out that the abyss that Oni meant was the chasm where Krishna had an accident. Maybe in Krishna's accident yesterday, Rinai wanted to show her her body. But at that time he did not look around. Apparently, Rinai's body was found rotting at that time along with the body of the baby she had born. They were found covered in dry leaves at the bottom of the ravine. That is if the devil has entered a person's soul. To cover up his mistake he made another more fatal mistake. Finally Doni was imprisoned to account for his actions. Meanwhile, the fate of Siabu Monkey's car is still inhabited by Rinai Dot until now. If Krishna is driving at night, he still likes to hear the sound of a baby crying in the car and the fishy smell still likes to be smelled. This story is only Krishna who knows and deliberately told his wife because she was very scared. Rinai's murder occurred a week before Krishna bought this car. So maybe it's only natural that Pak Yahya doesn't feel the oddity that he does.